The Chargers took care of business against the Bears on Sunday night football. But that is exactly what we expected them to do. So should we be excited about this win? Well, I'm gonna tell you why this win is more than just beating a bad team. Sorry, Bears fans, your team absolutely sucks. But I'm gonna start out with this offense. And while I start talking about this offense, make sure to like and subscribe if you do enjoy this content, man. It helps me out so much. And now let's talk about this offense, man, because this was a huge bounce back game for Justin Herbert, who was 31 for 40, 298 yards, bro. Two yards off of 300 and three touchdowns. I wish he just got two more yards, man, but no interceptions. That is the big takeaway from this stat line. This was his best game since the Vikings game where he had three touchdowns, 405 yards, my phone is absolutely blowing up and he needed to have a big performance against the Bears who have one of the worst defenses in the NFL in all aspects, pass rush, run defense and pass defense. They just, they suck, dude. This was his first Justin Herbert like performance since he broke his finger against the Raiders, which is awesome to see because since that injury, he has not been playing like himself. 13 out of 24, 167 yards and one touchdown and an interception against the Raiders. 22 for 37, 227, two touchdowns and an interception against the Cowboys with two missed touchdowns, a lot of bad reads in that in that game and late progressions and then through that game ending, ending interception. And then against the Chiefs, 17 for 30, 259 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions with another game inning interception, just like he had against the Cowboys. And there were even more bad throws in that game as well. To see him bounce back like this and not throw an interception while throwing three touchdowns on 40 attempts with 77.5 completion percentage, that is exactly what we expected a guy like Justin Herbert to do. And he did it playing through the injury so we should be excited about this performance because now we don't have to worry if he can play at this level from now until the end of the season because he has proven that he can another takeaway from this game that is worth being excited about is that justin herbert was not sacked in this game for the first time this season that probably played a role in him performing the way that he did but only two qb hits in this game and six pressures allowed whoa i mean hey this offensive line was dominating the bears in passing downs all day all the offensive linemen and austin eckler allowed only one pressure each so there was no weak link in that unit and after allowing five sacks and 17 pressures against the chiefs 18 pressures against the Cowboys and 16 pressures against the Raiders, allowing only six. That is a huge step up for this offensive line. And yes, the Bears pass rush is not good at all. But what else would you ask for from this offensive line? They did what a good offensive line should do, and they shut down the pass rush from an opposing NFL team. I don't care how bad the Bears pass rush is. They are all NFL players. In my opinion, that is worth being excited over because only a good offensive line can have a performance like they just showed on Sunday. Now, this rushing offense only averaged 2.2 yards per carry. This is concerning for me. And something that needs to be looked at, in my opinion, Austin Eckler was awesome in the passing game, but let's just be honest, he was a non-factor in the running game, partly because the offensive line needs to create better holes in the run game, but also because he is not cutting and seeing the field, seeing those rushing lanes as well as he used to. Joshua Kelly has been the better running back ever since Eckler came back when it comes to handing the ball off. But I think a good way to help out this running game is to put in Jordan McFadden and Foster Sarrell more as a fullback and tight end. With Gerald Everett gone, the Chargers were forced to put Trey McKitty on the line and line up Jordan McFadden and a backup guard at fullback. And man, I loved seeing that. And it worked really well for, I mean, the three plays that they did it. But with how big defensive linemen are in the NFL, I don't think it's viable to have your tight ends block them consistently the way that they've been doing it for this first part of the season. In the run game, if you want to have success, 
I say you use Jordan McFadden more as a fullback and even tight end in the red zone. That would surely be pr better process for this running game and be putting your players in better position to succeed. I know a lot of the time the tight ends are in motion pre-snap and then post-snap crossing the field in the backfield, getting crack back blocks on people, lead blocks for the running backs, but we pulled these guards all the freaking time in this offense. So, Jordan McFadden is used to being out in space like that and looking for defenders because he has been doing it as a guard. This sounds crazy, but put him at tight end in short yardage situations and I think you have a lot more success on the ground as well as in the passing game because no one is going to expect him to run a route and you know Kellen Moore is going to drop a play to get the big man the ball when nobody expects it. Also, no one expected Quentin Johnson to have such a great game when actually targeted, right? Yeah, psych. We all knew this would happen. And the fact that the Chargers have finally been forced to use Quentin Johnson is great for this offense. And hopefully Josh Palmer isn't God for a long period of time because he is a legitimate weapon for Justin Herbert now. And with the emergence of both Joshua Palmer and Quentin Johnson, this wide receiver core would be so dangerous. And then throw in Austin Eckler's receiving ability. Jalen Guyton coming back soon. Oh man, I just bolted up so hard right there. I'm excited for this offense, bro. It is all coming together. And don't be too worried about them not scoring in the second half, man. They literally didn't want to. I saw a lot of comments from my video yesterday saying that they could not score in the second half. No, they literally just did not want to. They were daring the Bears to do something in order to force the Chargers to score more points and they couldn't do anything about it. And they were content to just run the clock out in the second half, which, I mean, that's just how football is played sometimes. Yeah, we all would have liked to see the foot on the gas pedal still, but that's just the decision that they made. And it worked out in a three score victory when in the second half, they were not even trying to score on offense. Now listen, that is something to be excited about. When your team wins by three possessions and they weren't even trying to score for an entire half of the game, that is dominance. And then defensively, look, everything started to come together too. Joey Bosa had his best game of the season with an 82.7 defensive grade. Kenneth Murray was awesome again in the running game, only allowed 32 yards in the passing game, which is a trend in the right direction. He had an 80.9 defensive grade and Khalil Mack, Derwin James played well. They are all leaders on this Chargers defense, having good games and plays that you can point to and say, yeah, he made a positive impact in this game. They only allowed one score, really, because late in this game, they were playing their backups and the game was already in garbage time at that point when they allowed that late touchdown. This defense was way more aggressive, had 14 pressures while holding the Bears to 2.9 yards per carry, two interceptions only five missed tackles in this game and also one of those missed tackles was essing bassi late in the game so really only four missed tackles with these starters the defense was putting pressure on tyson bajan and not allowing him to get comfortable with these blitzes and then also getting good pressure on only four man rushes which is what you would expect from two elite edge defenders they got turnovers took away the offense's best chance of winning this game, which was running the ball, and did exactly what they should have done against a bad Bears team. If you aren't excited about this defensive performance, then let me ask you, what would get you excited about this defense? They did what we expect them to do, and there is nothing more that we can really ask for outside of seeing them do this more often, which, yeah, that is fair. I, I feel that same way, but since they just did it, that proves that they can do it. Now, they just need to build momentum and do it next week versus the Jets and then consistently play to this level, which is the level that they should be at. Let's be honest. Brandon Staley is a defensive mastermind, right? He's got all the tools that he needs. The offense and the defense and even special teams, they all played top down as a disciplined, tough and cohesive team, which is what Brandon Staley has preached ever since he has got here. This was the first time that we have seen all three phases of the game dominate like this and all of our best players having good days. Coincidentally, 
This is also the first game post Brandon Staley reset. So, is that a coincidence? Or is that just the Chargers' destiny? We'll find out. But if you want to see my full thoughts on this game, you can click right here. I went through everything. Thanks for watching.